It may happen a circuit needs uh, several voltages from a transformer, and if you are working on a one-off circuit ordering, a special transformer is often too expensive. And while it's possible to bring together more than one transformers to make it the required voltages, a far better option would be to have a single transformer with multiple windings. So how about adding yourself the required windings over a standard transformer? It is very unlikable to find a classical square transformer with enough room to add further windings. So the only option is to work on a toroidal transformer. So you can order a relatively cheap off-the-shelf toroidal transformer and then add all the additional windings your project needs. To complete the power supply introduced in the video where I made the spatial potentiometer, link in the description, I also need multiple voltages. A toroidal transformer I have provides two 15 volt outputs, but it lacks a further output for the 5 volt. So this is what I'm gonna do today, adding a further coil. Because I don't know what uh, voltage to expect from the transformer, I just want uh, about one meter or three foot uh, of uh, wire around the, the transformer. I temporarily connected it to the power main, uh, to the mains, and now I measure it, uh, and I see it's just one volt. So it is about one volt per meter. Now calculate the number of turns for the required voltage, in my case 42, and uh, also calculate the required length of wire you need. So in my case I have 7 turns with 1 volt and I want 6 volt, this means I need about 6 meters plus 10 centimeters for the terminals. However, because you know the math is low, add some more margin to avoid running out of wire while winding. Now I have this thin wire, it is uh, enamel wire, but it is too thin, it is only 0.5 millimeters and um, for the current that I want uh, I need uh, about uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millimeters. Uh, so my solution is to put two wires in parallel so that uh, we will reach the diameter required to carry the current. So here we go, let's wind the wire maybe on this side so I put uh, on, on this side so it doesn't cover the label and uh, let's go. Let's Keep this wire out of the way and not stop them from interfering. Now let's continue with the, the warning of the wire. What the hell? What has happened here? What? <laughs> For us, some reason, I don't know why, the wire broke. Uh, however, not a problem. I join it with a little bit of solder and, uh, and then uh, it will continue. Let's test the, the result. I added a couple of, of turns more to have uh, more voltage. Uh, okay. Maybe too much because I have 7 volt now. <laughs> Remember that uh, enamel must be scratched away from the wire before soldering or using the wire. Now let's finish the coil with uh, tape to keep it in place and uh, adding the wires, terminal wires. Okay, let's try with this load. This is 3 ohm load of 2 amps. At the moment we have uh, 6.4 volt uh, with no load. And under load we have 5.8 5 .8, uh, volt. Uh, that is pretty fine. Okay, it is running for a while now and uh, it is uh, barely warm. 
barely, barely won. However, 5.8 volts, uh, it is under load, while and, uh, with no load we have uh, 6.5 uh, volts. Let's calculate the resistance, 6.5 minus uh, 5.8, which is 0.7 volt, over 2 amps, it is uh, 0.35 ohm of internal resistance of the resistance of this wire. We can also calculate the power here, this resistance times uh, the current uh, squared. So it's 2.8 watt that is lost uh, by the transformer. The secondary coil is like a voltage source, but since the wires has some resistance, that resistance can be represented as a series resistor. What I made was to calculate the voltage drop across this internal resistance by first measuring with no load and then with full load. However, this is a rough calculation because the difference in voltage it is also influenced by the voltage drop at the internal resistance of the primary coil as well. Of course, you can add much more coils and you can even interpose a shield. Hacking a standard toroidal transformer is easy. Only caveat the sum of the power you draw from all coils, including those already existing, must not exceed the nominal power of the transformer. The rate by 10% to stay on the safe side, since the internal coils have less opportunity to dissipate heat. If you wind a high voltage coil, be sure to insert waxed paper to increase the insulation between layers. Eventually I re-added some more turns because I realized that the required voltage for the regulator is indeed 7 volt. And uh, so this is the final result. Masking tape uh, can be used to hold the wires together and uh, reduce the risk of vibrations. Best type is the one used for external masking because it has a very high adhesion, while the blue version has the tendency to detach. Now I won the coil by hand because it is made of relatively few turns and a relatively small length. However, if you have a longer length, to wind up it is better to use a shuttle. The shuttle is just a simple piece of wood shaped in this way with a couple of holes to secure the wire while winding. The wire must be first wound around the shuttle and then transferred to the toroid. Easy like Sunday morning! Next step is building the power supply with this transformer and the special potentiometer I described in the previous two videos. As always, comments and questions are welcome and if you haven't already done, subscribe and ring the bell icon so you won't miss next videos. For today, that's all folks, thanks for watching, see you next time! Yeah, yeah, yeah.